like we should have because I was like slipping his head and all over. I this hill right out here. Does anybody come in on this hill over by the stop light? Did you come in on it today? No, I didn't. Good call. They didn't plow it. I'm like, oh my gosh, are you kidding me? Like they didn't plow that hill, and so I came in on it not knowing that it wasn't plowed, and I almost didn't make it in because my car is like a little tiny car, not made for the snow at all. Did you come in on a page? That's what happened to me too. But that's scary because that's like by the river. They didn't plow over there either? No, they didn't. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I think it was more than everybody. Yeah, I, I don't think they were even working on it. I didn't even know they were working on it. Wow! Alright. What's the uh, answer? Here? Oh, there's Santi! Santi, welcome! Glad you made it! Let me unmark it. It's broken. Okay, there we go. No, I didn't. I think I just forgot. Yeah, I'm not. I... Okay. There we go. I can't. I love how enthusiastic you are, but you didn't have a lot of things. All right, here we go. So you guys, today's lesson, are we ready? Today's lesson is going to be um, pretty short, pretty straightforward. I think that a positive phrases are fairly easy. Chance, you guys stop talking about I think a positive phrases are really easy. There's a really awesome trick that you guys can use to identify a positive phrases, which are the phrases we're going to be talking about today. So I will teach you that fancy little trick, um, and then it should make your life way less complicated than it is. We have everybody in. I only have 18. Who am I missing? We're missing a couple people because we have like 21 people in this class. Who are we waiting on? Well, okay, yeah. You have a free task. You can Oh, and Kylie. Okay, there it is. Kylie, welcome. Here, I'm gonna put the joint quote code on the board so that we can go ahead and get started. S J E E U N. All right, so Kylie, Santi, um, if you would turn in your prepositional phrase worksheet from yesterday, and then we have our notes out from yesterday, and we're gonna be continuing on with notes. Um, joint code is up here on the board for you. Okay, so these notes are on the back of your notes from yesterday, so if you guys want to make sure that you're on the back with the positive phrases and ready to go. And we are, I turn this on, off to the races. So, and a positive, make sure you're filling in your notes as we go, and a positive is a noun or a pronoun that identifies or renames another noun or pronoun in a sentence. Okay? So the job of a positive is to rename or to give more information about another noun in a sentence. So here would be an example of a positive. My younger brother Logan is a sophomore. Logan is the positive renaming the noun brother. Fun fact, I do have a brother named Logan, and when I made this slideshow, he was a sophomore. But now he's a senior. Okay, so Logan is the positive, the noun in the sentence that's renaming this other noun brother. You guys see that? Does that kind of sort of make sense? Okay, great. <laughs> And a positive may have an adjective or an adjective phrase, and if you have more than one word that's modifying another noun in the sentence, it's called an appositive phrase. So here would be an example of a couple of positive phrases. My aunt and uncle, the Spaders, own a business, Spaders RV Center near I-90. So the Spaders is renaming aunt and uncle. Spader's RV Center near I-90 is renaming business. So when I say that it renames it, okay, what it basically means is that it's giving more information about that noun or pronoun, right? Like this second one here is giving more information about what the business specifically is. The Spader's is giving more information about who my aunt and uncle are, okay? This is a true fact, but obviously it's not Spader's RV Center anymore because they sold it. All right. Oh, I forgot I had arrows. Okay, there we go. Moving on. A positive, this is the trick that I told you about. Okay, this is what makes a positive really, really easy to identify. 
Because the positives are always set off by commas, which means a comma has to come before the positive phrase and after the positive phrase. The only exception to that rule is if you have a single word of positive. So like in the first example on the last slide, Logan was renaming brother. Okay, that was a single word of positive, so it didn't need commas on both sides. But if you're a positive is more than one word long, then it has to have commas on both sides. So really, when you guys are looking for a positive phrases, just look for the commas. Because that's going to be a good indicator as to where the positive is in the sentence. So here's an example, again, of a, a single word of positive that does not need commas. Her son, Bill, is my friend. So Bill is renaming son. Here would be an example of one that does need commas because it's more than one word. Dr. Blumenthal, our family doctor, is a fine woman. So our family doctor is the positive phrase renaming who Dr. Blumenthal is. So here we need to make sure that we're offsetting it with those commas on both sides. So just look for the commas. That'll really help you. If you need to charge your Chromebook, then go ahead and move and charge your Chromebook. All right. So why is it called an appositive phrase? This word apposition means the positioning of things side by side or close together. Appositives are always going to be right next to the word they're modifying. Okay? They're in apposition to one another. They're side by side. So an appositive is said to be in apposition to the word it's modifying. So like Logan is in apposition with brother. They're side by side. That's why it's called an appositive. You don't actually need to like know that for a test or anything, but I just thought it was a fun fact. That's where it looks the same. Do you have a question? Why is it Well, I think he's wondering about the definition. We can write that up there if you want. This? This isn't on your notes because this is just a fun fact. You don't have to know this for your test. All right. Let's practice. So what I want you guys to do on your Chromebook, I want you to underline the positive phrase or the positive in this sentence and then draw an arrow to the word it's renaming. Let's finish in five. Okay, so we have a little discrepancy here. Half of you underlined a hot-tempered tennis player as the positive, 
and half of you underlined Robbie as the positive. Let me ask you this. What is the subject of this sentence? Robbie. Robbie is the subject of the sentence. You will never, ever, ever have a phrase be a subject of the sentence. So which one is correct here? Is it a hot-tempered tennis player or Robbie that's the positive? Maddie? A hot-tempered tennis player is your positive. Now your other clue, you guys, that that's the positive, okay, besides Robbie's the subject, so it can't be the positive. Okay, your subjects can never be part of a phrase. So Robbie cannot be the positive because it's the subject of the sentence. It already has a job to do. But your other indicator here is this comma. Remember, a positive will always be offset by comma. So we have to have a comma here to offset this positive phrase from the rest of the sentence. The only reason we don't have a comma on this end of it is because it's the beginning of the sentence, and we don't start a sentence with a comma because that's crazy, right? Now, if we were to move this and put it after Robbie, if we said Robbie, a hot-tempered tennis player, then we would have a comma on both sides. It would be Robbie, comma, a hot-tempered tennis player, comma, okay? So watch out for those commas, because if you have a positive phrase that starts a sentence like this, you'll only have one comma coming before what will probably be the word that the, the positive phrase is renaming, the subject of the sentence. Does that make sense? Questions on that one? Okay, go ahead and try this one. Finish in five. Oh man! Okay, this one was tricky because we have a lot of stuff that's got commas around it in this sentence. So how the heck are we supposed to figure this out? Okay, remember your rule, you guys, with a positive phrase. It. A positive phrases are never going to contain a verb, okay? They're never going to contain a verb because only clauses can contain a verb. So you have to be careful with that, okay? So some of you said that this right here, that has spied my bowl of oatmeal would be a positive. That can't be the positive because we have a verb has spied in there. A positive are always going to be a noun or pronoun and any modifiers, so any adjectives of that noun or pronoun. All right, so then we had a, a little split between the insect and a large hairy legged cockroach. Oh, wait. Oh, I totally failed. I did fail because I, I thought there was a comma right here. A large hairy legged cockroach, that has spied my bowl of oatmeal. Never mind. Okay, you guys are right. Okay, the large hairy leg cockroach that has spied my bowl of oatmeal, I'm sorry, is the positive. Renaming insects. Okay, we had. That was a really bad example because. <laughs> yes, it is. That is way beyond what we've learned. Normally, you won't have a verb like word in there. Normally, you won't have a verb like word in there. Uh, I'm not even going to explain why that's correct to you because it's way too complicated. So. If you underlined this entire thing and you said that was the positive renaming an insect, you were correct. Yay, good job. But I'm not going to explain it because it's really hard to explain. Okay, moving on. All right, try this one. This one's a lot easier. No, we're all nice. I know,
All right, let's try to finish in five. All right, I think pretty much everybody got this one. Okay, so we have the messiest eater at the table. That is the appositive We're renaming our subject of our sentence Clifford, right? We know that's the appositive because it's offset by commas, and it comes right next to the noun that it's renaming. How about during the dinner conversation? What is that? Does anybody know? Chance, what is that? No. Well, I mean, yeah, it's telling us when, so it's answering one of those adverb questions, but what is that? Yeah, Maddie. It's a prepositional phrase, okay? And it's telling us when, like Chan said, when he spewed. Okay, so what kind of phrase is it? Adjective or adverb? It is telling us when, and it's modifying the verb spewed. This prepositional phrase would be what? Adjective or adverb? Okay? Adverb. Yep, so here we have an adverb prepositional phrase starting our sentence that's modifying skewed. We've got our subject of our sentence, Clifford, and then we have our appositive, the messiest eater at the table, renaming Clifford. Ooh, wouldn't that be a fun one to diagram? Okay, moving on. Now what we're going to do, we're changing it up a little bit. So you guys have a multiple choice. I've underlined a phrase in this sentence. You guys have to figure out what kind of phrase it is. Is it an adjective prepositional phrase, an adverb prepositional phrase, an appositive, like single word appositive, or an appositive phrase? Go ahead and take a minute. You can use your notes and see if you can get this right. you guys about um, last week when my cat broke all my coffee mugs? Did I tell you guys that story? No. My cat broke all my coffee mugs. I was so mad. I was so mad, you guys. It was like, so I have like a little like dish bin that I take all my used coffee mugs home in, and it was sitting on my piano, and my cat decided to step into the bin, knocked it over, shattered all of my favorite coffee mugs. I was so upset. But anyways, the point of me telling you that, I got new coffee mugs, and I gotta show you my favorite one. My favorite one in the whole world. It says, I was told there'd be tacos. <laughs> Isn't that so good? I found that. There was a Hobby Lobby. Uh, tacos are my favorite food, in case you didn't know. I'm pretty much obsessed with tacos. Yeah, but you gotta see that when yep. taco tacos. Yeah, yeah, like 50 tacos. Tacos are life, man. Tacos are life. I just had tacos on Tuesday. So good. All right. Let's see how we did. We did very well. Okay, so this is a prepositional phrase. So you had to choose either A or B. It's either an adjective phrase or an adverb phrase. Now, this one was kind of tricky because, again, we have a component in here that we haven't even talked about. What is to music modifying in the sentence? Marcus? Yeah. Nope. Chance? Yeah. Listen, right? It's telling us what we're listening to. Now, this one kind of doesn't follow the rules because what it's modifying is what's called an infinitive. Anytime you have a to followed by a verb, it's called an infinitive. And infinitives are classified as a verbal. Which is very complicated. We're going to learn about those later on this year. 
It's called a verbal because oh, it what? looks like a verb, a verbal? It, but it doesn't act like a verb. Okay, so we have this prepositional phrase to music modifying a verbal, which means it's acting as an adverb phrase. Because anytime you have anything modifying a verbal, a to a verb. followed by fancy act stop talking. A to followed by a verb, um, then it's gonna be an adverb that's modifying it. So nice job on that. Try this along. Hey guys, use your notes. Really think this through. Okay. And guess that's how to mention Let's finish in five. Good job! Oh my gosh. As you guys thought about it, I saw more and more people jumping onto the right one. Nice job, you guys. Almost everybody got this one correct. So this again is a prepositional phrase, right? It starts with our preposition in. It ends with our object of the preposition warning. Does modify morning. Prepositional phrase. So then we just have to figure out, okay, what word in the sentence is it modifying? Well, this is answering one of those adverb questions when. It's telling us when it rises, right? So it's modifying the verb rises, making it an adverb phrase. Nice job. Try this one. This is actually a true statement, by the way, about my best friend, Mrs. Hefner. She, she's totally collecting animals. Currently, she has, living at her house, Five dogs, a cat, and two fish. And she doesn't live in like a, a huge house either. It's like a normal size house. A lot of yeah, that was her. That was her idea, by the way, to get the, the massive fish tank. She's got three. They have three fish tanks in that office. Like three. <laughs> she loves the animals. She loves them. We literally oh, left the collection. Alright, finish it back. What are you guys doing down there? Uh huh. Bless you, story. Yeah, you got her front, man. We're waiting on you. Let's go. Take one. We're locked in three. Alright. Is renaming who the friend is. Friend is the subject of the sentence. Kelsey is renaming friend. So if it's renaming something, what does it have to be? Aiden, what does it have to be? On a positive. Now it is just in a positive, not in a positive phrase, right? Because the positive phrases will be more than one word. If it's just a single word doing the renaming, then it's just in a positive. All right, try this one. If this were on a positive phrase, what would we see on either side of it? Commas. Okay, 
Okay, remember, a positive phrases are always offset by commas. Okay, this is not offset by commas. Plus, it starts with one of our key prepositions. Do you guys remember I told you those key prepositions? Of, to, from, at, with, for. I remember. Okay, those are our six key prepositions. You have to remember and know those. This is one of our key ones. Of, followed by the object of the preposition. Does modifying were. This is the prepositional phrase. Okay, well, what is that prepositional phrase giving us more information about? Lengthen. it. What is this prepositional phrase giving us more information about? No. This is, the war is part of the prepositional phrase. What is this prepositional phrase modifying? What is it giving us more information about? Veterans. Okay, if it's modifying a noun, it has to be an adjective. Right? It's answering that adjective question, what kind? What kind of veterans? The veterans of the war. Most of you got that. Nice job. Last one. Try this one. Let's see if we can get 100%. 100%.
Thank you. 